Hi everyone! Welcome to the podcast video thing. Podcasting! Yay! Yay! <laughs> we got Eric and Keith here. This is our second, yep, second, second podcast podcast that we're doing here. So be gentle. Be gentle. We're just getting our feet wet with this whole thing. Uh -huh. But we're also doing the video thing for the YouTube channel. So yep, there'll be some content there too. And then like the full talking head, unedited, you're, you're going to hear all of our ums and whatnot. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I, we never do that. But anyway, that'll be on our podcast link, and all that'll be down there in the, in the description. But anyway, let's jump into it. Roll that intro. All right, everyone. So, in our last podcast that we did, we sort of like we compared. Disney World with Disneyland. Yep. We sort of did like to compare and contrast. And we'll like link it up here somewhere so you guys could see that. And, and the podcast link will be down in the, in the description below. But this time I think um, we're just going to do like uh, more travel things. We're going to talk about road tripping, which I just did. Yes, yeah. Back, got back off. You're summer. fresh off the Myrtle Beach. Fresh off the Myrtle Beach road trip, right? And then uh, versus flying somewhere. Yep. And uh, which one we prefer, which one, you know, and some quirks and stuff. So, you know, it should be pretty fun. Right. So, which one would you say, let's just, let's just get it out there for the people. Which one would you say, ooh, spoiler, right up front. No, I think, honestly, money not being an option, I would say a distance, di money and distance money not distance. being an option. I would say flying. Yeah, me too. But, now here's the good question. Uh-oh, there's a question. Multiple, okay, say, say it's you and your family, though. Oh. Versus just you. Which one do you choose? Say you're going 10 hours. We'll say 10-hour oh. drive. Ooh. Now, see, we just got back from Myrtle Beach, like I said before, and that was a little extreme. How long was that for you? It was a. It was like eleven and a half hours, maybe. So, because there's no, like the last two hours of it, you're driving like highways and stuff like that, not interstate. So yeah, um, that made it kind of long. But <laughs> but but you know the thing about it though is like when you're flying, um, you're there a lot faster, but the cost is so much more for families. You know oh, what I mean? Yes, like. I mean, I, I feel like I remember, I'm not dating myself probably, gray hair, but anyway. Details. Um, I remember when you could like fly from here to Orlando for like under a thousand bucks for like a family of four. Easy. And but. now you're lucky to get away with double that, you know, and then you gotta maybe choose the cheaper option that has connections. So your travel time is still in, you know, like, or flying over. super late at night. Oh yeah, over late at night too, because that's. Sometimes that's your only option, you know, home, so. But anyway, yeah, I think, personally, um, uh, 10 hours is, is doable driving if you're with the family. But I, I would rather fly. I know, I know. 100% right? of the time. Flying, definitely. So, okay, so we, we've got the spoilers out, so why don't we go into the pros of, we'll start with road trips. Road tripping. Well... You get to see a lot of the country, right? Like you see different parts that you might, that you definitely just fly over oh, and would yeah. never see. That's that's fun. Um, it's a lot less expensive, like a lot oh, less expensive. Definitely. Like even if you add <clears throat> gas and hotel stay in there, it's still going to be cheaper, way cheaper than flying. <laughs> than flying. You know, there's just the experience of the, everyone being in the car, and uh, you know, you sort of don't get that that connection. Like, usually with the family, you know, everyone's doing their Xbox or doing this or that. But now you're forced to be in the same space. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be a positive or negative, but for the most part, it's, it's nice. Uh, I think, like, Roadside America, too. Like, that's maybe a little bit underrated, too. You exactly. Know, like, all these, like, mom and pop, like, little things you can see on the side of the road. Exactly. Little uh, things of... I mean, and a lot of, a lot of it... Um, is really cool. I mean, you know, 
I mean, heck, Adam the Woo's built his career off of what, like, roadside attractions. Right. Justin Scar, you know, those guys. The carpet Bagger. Carpet Bagger. Yeah. All those guys built their career, YouTube careers off of that, right? So there's some cool stuff out there to see for sure. Right. I think, like, you know, when you're driving, too, you probably need to weigh in, like, your car versus, like, rental car, probably. You know, I would say, if you're thinking... Wear and tear, I guess, like, you know, on your car versus, like, just going down and picking up a rental car. Maybe you need more space than what your car has, too. Mm. Which is, yeah, if you're going to, like, the beach like we did, you know, it would take a whole bunch of stuff for the beach, you know. It's hard to squeeze it all in a tiny little sedan, so. Right. I mean, even SUVs nowadays they have that, that tiny little behind the last mm. seat third row thing unless you fold the third row down. Yeah, unless there's only four of you, right, then. So, I mean, sometimes that can be a hindrance, too, but, I mean, you know, it depends. Um, like, myself, like, we've road tripped to Florida multiple times, and mm -hmm. how was that? The ATL. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think there's, like, not a good time to ever hit Atlanta. No, no. Like, I mean, you would think, but they have that new Florida, I mean, the Peach Pass, like, expressway thing now. That like is open north to south during the daytime and at nighttime it's open the opposite direction, so south to north for traffic flow to try to get people through faster. Mm -hmm. That's good, but it's also a toll road. Oh, so you're paying extra money on your trip already. Yeah, so, um, but I will say that like it seems like Kentucky goes fairly fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tennessee's Tennessee is like even if you go sideways south, through Tennessee. South. Even if you go sideways, if you follow 75, it's still really not that much longer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then Georgia. Mm. What, Georgia and Florida are the two longest states you, you could ever imagine to drive, like, north to south through. Maybe not as bad east to west, but, like, north to south, oh, my gosh. So, I mean, because you get to, like, Georgia, you're like, sweet. Yeah. Atlanta's only an hour away. Then after you get past Atlanta, you're like, Sweet, Florida's oh, only like four more hours away. Four hours of fun. <laughs> so, I mean, road tripping is... I think, like, the last time we drove to Florida, we only stopped... And we rented a minivan, mind you. Mm -hmm. We only stopped three times for gas. So would you say, like, price-wise, was it still cheaper even though you rented the minivan and all... And stopped... You didn't stop for a hotel, did you? No, we just drove straight through. Okay. So, just the eating, and the van, and the gas, would you say that still saved you money versus flying? Definitely. I think we only spent, like, total for going back, down and back, maybe not driving around, but it was only, like, $300 for gas. Well, that's not bad, for, I mean, in a minivan and stuff, yeah. especially, right? So Yeah, you're looking at, like, a bigger tank and stuff. But. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, I think, like, that plus... The general food, you know, you're probably only eating at the truck stop that you stopped to get gas at. Mm -hmm. Or somewhere, like, fast food. Right, right. I mean, Hardee's, because we got to stop at Hardee's. Oh, well, Hardee's We don't delicious. have Hardee's up north too much, Oh, so. yeah, I know. Well, Every time we see, do. Another benefit of road tripping. Yes. Road, restaurants you can't normally get to. And that's, and I like to do that too, right? Like, oh, yeah. I don't really like to go to places I can go around here. Uh -huh. So if like there's a place like Hardee's or even like a mom and pop shop or something like that. What about Gus's in Memphis? I or mean. Gus's in Memphis, you know, something like anything like that, unique cuisine uh -huh. like that you'd find along the way. Definitely a win for me for road tripping. Yeah. I mean And you can't get that while flying, you know, you're just flying right over it. Okay, so north to south is, is pretty easy, but but you've done a, a massive road trip. Around the country, like multi, was it like week? I can't remember. Uh, fourteen day, fifteen days, maybe. So okay, so this is going back to that we have time to spend, right? And, yeah. I mean, I know you kept it on the cheap. You were, we were, you were younger then, <laughs> obviously. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm <laughs> so, still so young. But anyway, but anyway, yeah. So, so okay. would you say that that's a feasible family trip, though? Mm. In a car with your kids. Nowadays, with the family, I wouldn't do. Because here's the thing: like when we're when you're younger, you know, you have 
all the ability to sleep in the car and not like wake up <laughs> at the rest stop or the rest stop or whatever. Walmart parking lot. That's sort of what we did, like uh, to save on cost. And uh, we tried to keep it out one night, but it was too much of a hassle because like when we were road tripping, we wanted to like be able to just hop up and go and do this and do that. Yeah. And the tent sort of made you like. You had to stop, and you had to set the thing up, and then you had to do all the things, and then tear everything <laughs> down the next day. Right. It was just not is is, you know, it took too many hours out of our time that we could have been driving here or there, so we didn't really do the tent thing too much. So it was mostly truck stop sleeping or Walmart parking lot sleeping, um, and there, you know, every few days would be like. Okay, and now we really need to stop at the hotel because we're funky. <laughs> you need to shower, right? Yeah, right. I, I get that. So, uh, but anyway, it was still fun, but with the family, I don't think so. You know, I, I don't think I could do it either. Even though nowadays everyone has a device, but like still, you're you're gonna get you're gonna get that argument from the kids that you know they're bored or they've just been in the car too long. So, but I will say. If you had a one destination trip, like you, you're driving like east to west or west to east, whatever, and you had one destination in mind, mm -hmm. and that one destination was like 19 hour drive, yeah, would would that be feasible? I mean, I would still probably try it just because, like, if you had the time, because yeah, obviously you're gonna have 19 hours out, 19 hours back. So right? there's that, but but versus flying. Um, because, like, you know, like, just say you went, were going to Yellowstone or something like that, you know, that's like a destination in and of itself. So, right. the experience of driving out there and, and stuff like that would be kind of cool to do. I think so, uh, too. With the kids and stuff like that. And, I mean, I think it would still be cheaper, but that long you'd have to do hotel, probably. I would guess you'd have to stop somewhere. I would not. Like, move. halfway. Yeah. So, but even with that, it would still be cheaper they put putting everyone on a plane, flying out there, and renting a car, and then doing all that. Oh, yeah, because when you get to your destination, you still have the expense of the car rental, too. Exactly. And so, like, And especially if you're going to a national park, you can't just Uber it, like if you're going to a big city like San Francisco or something. Mm, correct. Yeah, you'd have to get a nice vehicle to handle the mountainous terrains or wherever <laughs> you're going, right. you know, um, desert, whatever. <laughs> yep. But, yeah, so, no, I would definitely do something like that. I think I think that would be fun too. Maybe maybe one of these years we'll get around to that. But uh, I mean, I think I think there's a certain time limit on like what you're willing to you know have as far as like travel time versus what you're willing to like sacrifice as far as like vacation days. Well, I mean, yeah, because so. everyone has a certain set of vacation days, unless you're just like. I know. A full-time YouTuber. Right. A full-time YouTuber. Link the link, <laughs> Patreon link below. Anyway, I think it's definitely uh, well worth it to pile everyone in the car and at least experience that. Maybe when the kids are a little bit, like, younger to where they're not complete teenagers and ready to, like, kill you because you're in the car with mom and dad for too long. But, yeah, right. But uh, even, even then, you know, I think the experience of it is... Uh, I think it's a positive, honestly. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, like, I'd say, now let's shrink in the time. We've been talking, like, long distances, but let's talk, like, five hours and under. Say the plane ticket was exactly the same as, like, we're just hypothetically the, the, the gas price and maybe if you rent a car for, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. say the plane ticket was, but you still have to factor in the airport time. Right, so that in that instance, I would probably still drive that that distance because, I mean, your travel time might even be more flying because you got to get to the airport like two hours early. What if your flight's delayed? And your flight's delayed? Yeah, you, you can't control the weather that way. Exactly. You can drive through rain easier than like it, a plane can fly through a big storm or something. So I think like driving with a group of people, like your family or whatever, or friends. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh -huh. like five hours and under is doable. I think like by yourself. Oh well, mm, yeah. if you're by yourself, I don't know. I've done it multiple times, and it kind of kind of 
I don't know. I think I'm past the stage where road tripping is fun. <laughs> Like, you know, just by myself. Get there. Just want to get there. Yeah. And I don't think I would mind an extra hour in the airport if it meant that I didn't have to drive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about the pros of air travel type of thing. Sure. I'm personally, you know, I don't like to drive long, long distances. So, if it's like over 12 hours, that's pushing it for me most of the time. Yeah. Um, so that's where air travel comes in for me. Like, I'd, I'd want to just fly there. And luckily, where we go, Disney, a lot, we just hop, hop on the magic. Kitties are going crazy the yeah. next one. We hop on the magical express. Don't have to worry about car rentals. It's almost a no-brainer, you know, right. like when you're going to Disney or something like that. But even if I had to fly somewhere and rent a car, over 12 hours, I'm almost down with it. Because... Oh, yeah. Because just the time it saves you. It's funny you say like 10. Like my, my threshold is like 6. Oh, <laughs> well, I've I mean, been doing this for like, uh, like I travel for, you know, work and stuff. So um, it, it, make, it makes me think like, you know, hey, if I can get there a little bit easier flying, then I'm all for it. But but if I'm if I'm being honest, like, you know, I would, I would always choose flying over driving mm -hmm. because... Of the convenience, I mean, honestly, you have to you have to deal with the weather, and you you sometimes plan these vacations out like a year in advance. Right, so you don't know, you can't predict what the weather's going to be like. So, but I mean, I haven't really had too many bad airport delays or whatever. So, knock on wood. No, but, uh, I know, right? <laughs> I got, we've got more trips coming up. No. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the you know when you go for like, and it's a fun experience too, like with the family. The kids the, love the when you excitement of flying and stuff like that. So there is, and the kids love the fact that they're not stuck in the thing for multiple hours. I mean, unless they're flight, you know, unless they're flight international yeah. with their kids or something like that. But still, like you know, to Disney or even coast to coast, it's only five ish, five -ish hours three, or something yeah. like that. So it's not you're not spending a ton of time in the in the plane versus the car, you know. So that's that's definitely. I think the time savings is like really where it's at with the with the plane. So, would you say loyalty to an airline brand is better than the cheapest fare, or would you would you always choose cheapest fare? Well, look, I'm a bigger dude, right? And you know, I don't these budget airlines. A lot of them have like tiny seats and stuff like that, and not a lot of options to upgrade and stuff like that so i feel like just from that perspective i want to stay in the lane and and, and it's mainly because delta is like the main yeah thing airline out of the here. airline that we fly out of cincinnati all the time so i think the loyalty is good in that regards because you can upgrade usually you can upgrade those flights usually they have more planes so if there's more uh a weather issue or something like that then you don't have to worry about your flight getting yeah, canceled. Yeah, the, the one budget airline that has the two airlines that, or two airplanes that fly back and forth to right. where if, <laughs> if the weather's bad, then you're done. So, now I know a lot of people would be like, oh, but go for the cheapest flight every time. And, I mean, I get that. But just because, like, I've been so loyal with Delta, I've been able to take trips for cheaper because I have all these sky miles saved up yeah. and stuff like that. And it, it really helps Oh yeah, the decision of like driving versus flying. <laughs> Definitely. Because <laughs> now I have $800 off because I have all these sky miles. And that was like almost, <laughs> oh, gee, your cats are going crazy <laughs> in there. Yeah, they are. But anyway, <laughs> that's why I think loyalty is good to, to, one, to one airline. I think you should just stick... Stick with find one that you really like. Customer service, flying. Yeah, I mean American I Delta, United. I know there's a lot of business people that do United. I recommend flying like testing them all out. Like you know, if you if you're not loyal to a brand like Deep, like we are with Delta right now, you know, test them all out. Take a flight on like the same flight on like two or three different airlines, and that'll give you a good range of airlines to choose from. Like what service is better? Good reference. Yeah, yeah. You know, what, maybe this one's always late. Mm -hmm. You know, you never know. So maybe you get bumped all the time on this one, which I hear about United all the time. By yeah. the way, <laughs> but uh, so I mean, there, there's a, there's a perks to being loyal to the airline. Like you said, like you you accumulate sky miles 
Like I have status with Delta right now because I fly so much. Um, so it's like, I think it's a no-brainer. Like a lot of people just go on Expedia or whatever and type in the cheapest airline. But, but the problem with the cheapest airline is sometimes those are multiple carriers. So if you get to a destination, say you're connecting somewhere, you're going to have to like retrieve your bags from the baggage carousel, go check into the other airline. Mm. And then to your next destination. So, <laughs> yeah, that's not fun. Going international with the same airline or anywhere with the same airline is is key to a smooth trip, in my opinion. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that's a definitely another positive with air travel versus, like, driving somewhere. Like, the brand loyalties can help, help you out with, like, costs and stuff like that, for sure. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> customer service and I, I'll say Delta has helped me out like a lot of times like even I was in China and I had to make a call to them because I had to move a flight mm -hmm. and they were totally like on it and helped me out like you know I didn't stay on hold for like an hour or something like that so exactly so I mean you know think about that you know definitely I think you know it's it's weird to think but you know brain loyalty it, it does matter, I think, with these big businesses, and especially if you travel as much as you do. Um, it, it helps to pick whichever brand you like the most and just stay in that lane as much as possible. Like, sometimes you can't, but... Yeah, sometimes you have to go off off reservation, but most of the time, you know, you, you can always find a flight into somewhere with the brand that you've chosen. So anyway, like, let's talk a little bit more about, like, the annoyances with both. Because, I mean, there is, you know, things with both. And especially, like, with the flying. But, you know, yeah, we can start out with the road tripping thing because we started out with that before. Yeah, that sounds good. But, uh, I mean, the annoying thing is, like, road tripping, I think the most obvious thing is, like, Traffic and road construction, right? Traffic and construction that is always happening, right? I mean, and this doesn't ever seem like there's a good time of day to, to go. There anywhere. never is, right? Whenever you pick, there's always going to be a million other people that pick that same time. And they're always going to be wrecking into each other, have little fender benders. <laughs> type. This happened to us on our way to Myrtle Beach. We sat in traffic for like... Dude, it was like an hour or something, just in That's somewhere crazy. in South Carolina. Just there was an accident, and oh my god, dude, it was awful. So I mean, that part does not excite me about driving. The other thing I don't really like about driving is sometimes, um, well, even me, like, can, like you know, it's like you get the little road ragey thing built <laughs> up. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but you no, know, I think after a certain amount of time, you're like, you're like. You, you know, F it, I'm going to floor it and go 90 for the right. rest of the way. You See, know? I mean, it's like, I don't know. I just, <laughs> there comes a certain point in my time, and we try and switch out, usually driving or whatever, yeah. but there comes a point in time where I'm just like, I can't take it anymore. Well, you know, traffic or oh, yeah. just people driving or whatever it just starts getting to me after a while. So, I don't know. That's, that's, that's. My annoying. I think that's probably everyone's annoying I think, thing. Yeah, right? that, my annoyance too. And then like you know, couple that with like if you drive by yourself and you don't have anyone to switch out. Oh yeah. You know, then you're kind of stuck. So you yeah. just kind of like suck it up and like you know either like slow way down and let everyone get past you or whatever and hope you find an empty spot or just like continue with traffic and deal with it. I guess. Yeah. But, so. So, I mean, I, th I think the airlines, though, I mean, like, there are certain annoyances that come with flying, like... Gate I mean, fleas? Gate fleas are one uh, that I would if, say... If they don't know what gate fleas yeah, are. Yeah, go ahead and, you know, tell the uh, folks what gate fleas are. So, gate fleas, we've all been to the airport, or if you haven't, then we'll just let you know that some people... Most of the, most of the time, let's back up, most of the time... Airlines board in groups, right? It's like usually like first or people with special needs, yep. uh, first class, and then goes on down from yep. there. So some people only travel with their their non check bag, right? Right. And these are probably ninety five percent of these people that do this. The other five percent are probably people that are confused. 
and never travel anymore. Right. But everyone's lighting up, so they do it. <laughs> right. So they're like, huh. But these people, and if you're one, please consider changing your yes, your ways. <laughs> it's super annoying to have to have a line of people standing up at the gate because these people just stand there and even though they might be the last boarding class, they stay there because they feel like they need to get on the plane before everyone else in their boarding class so they can stick stuff in the overhead bins, most likely. Right. Um, and, I mean, I get it, but it's super annoying to everyone else because everyone's going to board in, in, in like, the class that you're, you booked. Right, and the people that are ahead of you are going to be annoyed because... I do this all the time where I have to like say excuse me to get through the line crowd of people through the line, everyone sitting up there that are just standing there waiting for boarding zone four when I'm like one or something. I know. And you're like, uh hello, I can't get around because there's twenty five people already up. There's no need people to stand up at the gate and wait for your boarding I mean, I know sometimes the things are full. But stand off to the side. Yeah. You don't need to stand right at the gate. What I really like is Delta has been doing, and other airlines too, I've noticed, have been doing like these um, like numbered things. Like, you know, you like first class is over here, then like all the other like zones, like one through five or six, whatever it is, you know, on your airline, are like in like rows. But the, the problem with that still is that... They're right by where you board, right? So even if, like, you're controlling people in, like, the corrals, as I call them, you know, then then there's still people, like, you know, backing up into the aisles or backing up into the, the walkways. So just just wait till they call boarding. Wait till they call your number, zone, whatever it is. You'll, you'll make a lot more people happy and less people grumpy, which is, which is one thing about people that travel a lot they they tend to get grumpy because they notice these minor annoyances yeah you might not notice it like if you're just every what once a year you're flying somewhere but like i know for the people that fly all the time and have to deal with these people inconsiderate people crowding the gate area when it doesn't even matter like what's it i mean getting on the plane Five minutes before someone else is necessarily going to... The play leaves the same time, no matter... And here's what I would suggest. If you're worried about your non-check uh, bag, you can always gate-check the thing. Yeah. Don't stress out about finding overhead bin space. Because if there isn't any, gate-check it and pick it up on the at the door when you get off the plane. A lot of places um, will gate like do a gate check ahead of time too now yeah. for free. They'll check it through to your final destination. So so I would say if that's the reason you're standing up there, consider gate checking your luggage because it's I've done it a few times and honestly it saves it saves a little bit of time. Like the boarding way, process right. too. I mean People um, aren't trying to, like you said, find overhead space. So, you know, consider doing that with the uh, with gate checking your your carry on. So don't stress about it. There's no need to get on the plane and sit there for thirty minutes when you can get on your leisure and sit there for five minutes. You know. Yeah. So uh, th- another thing I will say about crowding too, like baggage claim, like. I always check a bag. I never carry bags on because I don't have to pay for it. So it's just a perk. You know, preference because I don't like dragging like a large bag through the airport. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, there's if you just back up a few steps away from the luggage carousel, people can get their luggage easier when it comes out of the turnstile. Like if you're crowding the thing all the way around you got to fight through people to get your luggage. Just take a few steps back. And not everyone in your party has to be at the (laughs) luggage carousel right next to the thing. Especially, I find, little kids that couldn't lift the luggage anyway are crowding right up there next to their parents. But it would be better if they were a few steps behind with one parent or the other. It's a safety Um, thing, really, with kids. Because... You don't want your kid getting smacked with a huge piece of luggage coming off of the carousel. Because so. the person next to you, you could be careful, but the person next to you could just whip their bag off the carousel. And your kid's sitting right there, and he gets taken out because of 
because of uh, like the person swinging their bag. So exactly. So these little oases, I mean, they're minor, but like you kind of like if you travel a lot, like myself, it's like you notice them a lot more. So I mean, a couple other just quick ones I'll say real fast is um, for security purposes. It's e better if you pack everything neatly in your bag. And if you have medications or like whatever, put them in like a separate Ziploc baggie. So if you have to take them out of, you're not like pulling one at a time out of your bag. Right. If you travel with camera equipment, your batteries that likes to, uh, TSA lo loves to pre-screen you for, uh, you know, like, or extra screen you would call it, like for like extra batteries or something. Make sure those are maybe in a baggie, easy to get out. You know, just something that speeds your process. You help them, you help the line. Mm -hmm. If you have pre-check like we do, you generally don't have to take anything out of your bag. Um, so just like take your wallet, take your keys out of your pocket, put them in your backpack, send them through. You don't have to worry about your watch. Like my Apple Watch, I never take it off. My wedding ring, never take it off. Belt, if you wear it, I usually don't have to take that off. Just security things, like, to help speed the process up. Don't be that one guy that, like, waits till he gets all the way through or up to the line and you're next and you're taking 47 things out of your bag because you didn't, like, you, like, put anything in, like, baggies or stuff or right. organize. Right. Yeah, de definitely, you know, those annoyances can... And, I mean, it's for everyone, right? Because, like, if you do those, if you, like, plan ahead or think ahead while you're in the line, like you said, they, the line just moves smoother, and then everyone's less stressed because security is already kind of a stressful thing yeah. for everyone to go through with these at the airport, right? So, it's, just, you know, annoyances like that. Yeah, and, like, maybe if you have the ability to print your ticket at the house, too, print your ticket at the house ahead of time, a lot of, a lot of Saves. companies do it on your phone now. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You can get to take it on your phone, too. It, it saves time. You save... If you do it on the digital, you save, like, paper, which is great. Mm -hmm. And um, all you do when you get to the airport is you walk straight up. You, you scan your um, ticket. But anyway, you scan your ticket. You hand them your bag. They say, here's your boarding... Or here's your luggage uh, receipt. Go on. You don't have to stay at those kiosks. And, like, wait for, you know, like, the huge line that inevitably piles up of everyone checking in. Or fight for a kiosk, I mean, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Just, a, like, a little things that you can do ahead of time will save you a great deal of headache and everyone else some headache in the airport. I think we kind of, we made the people think the airline travel is bad. When our, oh. well, it seems like our road trip um, uh, was less... Stressful. Compla well, there was, I mean, really, the road trip is on you, right? You're not just, I mean, the people that you deal with are external. They're like in uh, other cars around you or whatever. Right. It's not often that you're crammed into these little situations where you have to do things like security and, and stand at the gate with everyone and like personal mono a mono <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> And then even carry it onto the plane with all these other people that might be, they 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 had this thing booked forever. They're sick, but they still came on the plane. <laughs> yeah. Or they stick their feet on, or they kick the back of your chair. You know, there's all these things with air travel. Yeah. That you don't get with uh, traveling in the car. So I think that's sort of why our complaining thing was a little bit. Heavier on the airline Heavier side. Heavier on the airline side, just because of the interaction with people. I agree. Like airline, air, airports are always packed nowadays. You you all know this if you do, if you fly a lot. If you don't, like air, airports are packed almost all the time. <laughs> Especially if you fly through major hubs, you know, like Atlanta or like Newark or something like that. You're going to find that like there's not a like slow time at the airport. So you know that's I think why I now I still think. You know, sort of like to wrap this up here. Yep, let's um, wrap it up. I think uh, long distances, and if I had enough sky miles, I would fly every time, even though there is all these annoyances, right? Right. I mean, they're really minor nitpicky things, but it, like in the grand scheme of your vacation, it could like sour your your mood on the starting of your vacation, right? And like you said, 
flying by yourself, if you just go by yourself, five hours and up. I mean, I'm probably thinking about flying because, yeah. you know, a little bit less of a headache and less stressful and stuff like that. But um, personally, like, it, 10 hours or less with the family, I'm thinking probably get in the car and drive just to save the money. And it doesn't really save you time, but, it, you know... I mean, if you, 10 hours you could do in one day, right? So mm-hmm. if you really power through it and, like, switch off drivers, like you said, yeah. make sure you do that because definitely you'll get that long gaze driving. But, oh, yeah. But anyway, yeah, so I still stand by uh, my original assumption, even after talking through this, that um, flying is definitely better than road tripping. But road tripping, if you have the time and the, the patience for, for that then it would definitely be, it's definitely good to go see the great country we live in. It is, and save yourself a little bit of money, right. if you, especially if you have, have like three or four people in your family yeah, and stuff like that. So that's why I think where road trip it definitely has the edge a little bit for me. It's just the money saving thing part of it, but the time saving thing, um, it's really nice for longer, longer things <laughs> because I, you know, if I'm staring down the 12 hour drive, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. But anyway, both of them have their pros and cons for me. So yeah. So why don't, why don't they, uh, why don't you guys let us know which one you prefer in the comments below, road yeah. tripping or flying? De- you- definitely. That'd be awesome. And then um, they should probably also subscribe to I not only our subscribe. podcast yes. and the YouTube channel here. Do that like thing and like and share and sharing if they got some useful information out of right. it. Right. Mm-hmm. You don't know anyone that travels a lot that can relate. Exactly. And uh, we're um, just so you know, we're going to do this um, like this, this show is sort of like replacing our text Saturday thing, so we're going to probably keep it on the two weeks. Yeah. Unless we start rolling with this thing, but you got so much travel coming up at the end of the year yeah. and stuff, so I don't know if that's feasible, so I think we're going to try every other week and uh, just let this roll for a while like that and see how that goes. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I hope you really enjoyed it, and we'll see you in two weeks for our next podcast slash video podcast slash <laughs> thing that we did here. <laughs> But anyway, (laughs) thanks a lot for watching and listening. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace and love.